The Clone Wars was one of the most devastating wars in galactic history, spanning across the entirety of the galaxy and seeing a vast amount of death spread to the people of the galaxy. Today we're going to take a closer look at just the first year of the conflict and how the conflict actually started. The opening shots of the Clone Wars were fired on Geonosis, where Republic forces carried out a massive assault against Separatist droid construction facilities there in an effort to carry out a decapitation strike. This marked the first battle of the war, the first battle of Geonosis. The Republic offensive was brief but intense. Using a vast hit-and-run strike, the objective was to kill or capture Separatist leadership and disable the large army that had been constructed there. However, the Republic failed at both of these goals, with Separatist leadership and a large portion of the Separatist military escaping off of Geonosis. With a majority of the Separatist forces and the entirety of Separatist leadership having escaped the planet, they began carrying out their first offensives of the conflict. The initial days of the war were characterized by massive Separatist gains, Separatist forces surging outward from their controlled territory into Republic space. This was particularly devastating because during this period of time, the clone army, known as the Grand Army of the Republic, was not anywhere near ready to face the massive Separatist droid threat. As such, planets like Christophsis and Ryloth were quickly overrun by Separatist forces. These worlds would have to be liberated at later days. Luckily, however, many of these worlds did maintain homegrown resistance movements, which did keep up a minor fight on the surface of the planet. The notable exception here being Christophsis, which maintained a Republic garrison on the surface of the world, even in the face of a massive Separatist assault. This is where one of the first major battles of the conflict, beyond Geonosis, began. Republic forces did the best they could to draw a line in the sand on Christophsis and prevent Separatist forces from advancing any further. And while Separatist forces were able to briefly maintain a control of a majority of the planet, including implementing a large blockade, Republic forces eventually were able to smash through that blockade and carry out support and relief efforts to support the Republic forces fighting on the ground there, ultimately resulting in the Separatist attack on Christophsis being repelled. But that wasn't the end of Separatist offensives. New Separatist offensives would be carried out against mid-rim territories, mostly surging out from the outer rim systems that were under the control of the Separatists. This would include an assault which would ultimately begin one of the longest battles of the conflict, the Battle of Felucia, where Separatist forces would be besieging the planet for a majority of the war. This assault didn't extend much further than the strategically important world of Felucia, though, as they quickly met stiff Republic resistance on that planet. The other Separatist offensive that intended to take advantage of Republic weakness in these early days of the war was the Skytop Station offensives. These were a series of offensives utilizing key strategic information provided by Skytop Station. This offensive was relatively effective, however, it didn't include any major planetary invasions, instead just a large Separatist space fleet pushing through Republic naval forces. However, this offensive was brought to a halt with the Battle of Bothawi, ultimately grinding the Separatist war machine in that region of the galaxy to a halt. On top of that, the Separatists began trying to wheel out their own offensive weapons that that could potentially win the war. Most notably, things like the Subjugator-class Dreadnoughts. Separatist advances quickly ground to a halt, and Republic counterattacks became the norm. Having successfully captured Christophsis, Republic forces used it as a jumping-off point to carry out an invasion of Ryloth. The intention of this invasion was pretty straightforward, liberate Ryloth, which had been fighting against an ongoing Separatist occupation. This battle was intensive, but ultimately did result in the planet's liberation. This is important to the Republic, by the way, not because of the population of Ryloth, but because of the position of the planet, which sat at a relatively strategically important position within the galaxy. With Separatist offensives ground to a halt, Republic offensives began to pick up, most notably with a secondary attack against Geonosis. Republic forces had been forced to withdraw from Geonosis to counter the Separatist advances elsewhere in the galaxy. In that time, Separatist leadership had moved back onto the planet and re-established a new droid and weapons factory, which needed to be disabled. In one of the final battles of the first year of the war, the Republic carried out a massive second invasion of Geonosis, the Second Battle of Geonosis. The objective of this battle was to destroy the Separatist construction facilities there and potentially capture Poggle the Lesser. Unlike the first battle of Geonosis, in the second battle, the Republic did manage to achieve their strategic goals, destroying the droid construction facility and capturing Poggle the Lesser in the process. This time, Republic forces were numerous enough to maintain an occupation force on Geonosis, and the planet would not fall back into Separatist hands for the remainder of the war. Ultimately, for the first year of the Clone Wars, the situation looked rather grim for the Republic. They were facing a vast droid army with a relatively small clone force that had yet to prove itself in combat. There was generally this fear amongst the people of the Republic that they would quickly be overrun by Separatist forces and be subjugated by Separatist policies. However, none of that came to fruition. Luckily, in these early days of the conflict when Republic numbers were thin, the clone troopers fought their hardest, being able to hold back Separatist offensives left and right. And with those offensives ground to a halt, they were able to carry out their own offensive operations. All of this, however, started with a single battle, the first battle of Geonosis, and if you'd like
like to learn about how that battle played out, I'll leave a link in the upper right hand corner to my battle analysis on that engagement. And if you have any other battles you'd like to see covered in future episodes of Battle Analysis and added to the archive, you can let me know down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.